It's only when you start playing custom levels in Super Mario 64 ROM hacks that the flaws of this particular control scheme start to show. A discussion of Super Mario 64 Star Road and all of its complexity is beyond the scope of this review. Suffice it to say that this hack is ambitious, creative, and has some good things going for it. Unfortunately, all of that is vastly overshadowed by the terrible level design, which doesn't match Mario's movement and physics very well at all. It often requires jumps of Herculean timing and skill that only a Super Mario 64 hacker would possess. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if this game was never tested, because when Star Road gets bad, it gets really really bad. Like Sonic 06 mock speed sections levels of frustrating and unpolished. There's a reason why Super Mario 64 doesn't have a lot of do or die platforming over bottomless pits. And there's a reason why Super Mario Galaxy, which does have a lot of that kind of level design, has floatier controls and fixed camera angles. Honestly, if you thought the controls were bad in the original game, I dare you to complete Mad Musical Madness or Colossal Candy Cluster. You will gain such an appreciation for the original, it's not even funny. To give Star Road the credit it deserves, it did at least fix the camera to make it more like Spyro the Dragon. Super Mario 64 The Green Stars, on the other hand, keeps the original camera system but does a poor job optimizing levels around them. A lot of simple platforming sections are made unnecessarily harder entirely because of the dated camera controls. As dated as Super Mario 64's camera is, there is never a time where the camera actively impedes simple platforming like this. 